Many beautiful problems were discarded as we were looking for our 13. If you want to see a list of the criteria that we used, just click on your screen. One of the ones that was discarded was this one, building barricades. Here we have logs of length 1, 2, 3, and 4 in each row, and you have to build a barricade. This one works, but this one does not. Why? Because you can see that there are two joins that are vertically aligned. That's not acceptable. You can also uh, choose to look at larger barricades. Here's one of length six. This is more suitable whenever you're looking at this as an algebraic problem for a much higher grade. In 1998, Lego came up with their own problem, which remains unsolved, and that is how to create an optimized packaging of their product based on a three-dimensional design. So let's say they wanted to have a starship. The starship has to be really strong, and it has to be cheap to produce all the different parts. So there's a number of criteria. We decided not to go with it, but it was a beautiful, rich problem. What's the smallest big square that you need to hold a whole bunch of little squares? So for example, let's say that we have nine little squares. They're one by one. How big a square do you need? Well, of course, you just need a three by three square, and that will hold them all. But it's not so obvious if you're dealing with 10 little squares. This is the best possible, and it's provably optimal. For 11, this is the best that I could do, but this is not optimal. This is the best solution, and this has not been proven. You can imagine that if this hasn't been proven, it certainly hasn't been proven for something like 55. This is the best solution that we find yet for 55. It's beautiful, but is it optimal? Who knows? One disagreement that happened in the conference was over whether square packing or circle packing was better. So the advantage of square packing is that it's nice that it alternates between solutions that are known, like how to pack 16, 25, 36, 49 small squares, to ones that we have no idea how to pack well, like 25 plus 1 or 49 plus 1. Those are really hard to pack. So that's a very nice little pattern that arises. Ed Pegg, who also came to the conference, he thought that uh, the circle packing problems are really cheap to get into teachers' hands because all they need are coins. And he, cr he came to the conference with a whole bunch of puzzles that were extremely tough to, to solve, um, all based on putting coins inside little metal lids. Games belong in the math classroom because they're a celebration of problem solving, and problem solving is at the heart of a quality mathematics education. One of the best for kindergarten is Santorini. You can click in the center of the screen to see children actually standing on the blocks. This is the adult version that you see here, but for kindergarten, they actually are their own pieces. Going with ImageNet for the kindergarten unsolved problem allows a lot of latitude to create some really interesting puzzles. Here's another one. In this one, you have to put those six items into the circles. Connected circles have to share something. So try it. Here's the answer. So you see the pigs are connected. Uh, the live pig and the rooster are live animals. The rooster lays an egg. An egg can be cracked. The cracked egg is a circle inside a circle, which is the same for the euro, a circle inside a circle, and you can put that into your piggy bank. Here's another one. Try that. So the answer is here, and the only one that might not be obvious is how is that sock linked to the crowbar? Well, look at the shape. Here's another one. The only one that might not be ob obvious there, but would be obvious for kids, is how is a pencil sharpener linked to the nose? Well, they both have two holes. <laughs> okay, last one. So this is, try to figure out this. Okay, there you go. And I'll let you figure out why all of those are connected.